Good morning and welcome back to Blurs, the show where I review and showcase your creations. First up we have Ali Reardon and their Festitian Islands. The Festitian Islands are currently split between the Republic of Festit and the United Socialist Unstels or Oblasts of Festit. They are both a result of Soviet occupation of the islands in 1929, which eventually led to the main ethnicity in the eastern side of the islands, the Eastern Novumians, inciting a controversial revolution with the help of the US and UK due to the illegal and excessive use of chemical weapons by the Novumians. A peace treaty was signed in 1958, establishing East Vested as an independent republic, with the treaty stating that all outlying islands to the west of the Patrie Pontem border belong to West Vested. Everything to the east belongs to East Vested, along with the establishment of a demilitarized zone on the Patrie Pontem border. This left the island of Apetente being disputed territory. Afterwards, East Vested illegally occupied most of it, leaving the West controlling the northern side of the city of Torgve. This is really fun. I really enjoy this. The detail as well is just great. Ace. I really like the naming convention you got going on here. It feels really Germanic to me. Places like Trocken, Port Mayr, Unfruchtbar. These all feel like either straight up German words or plays on German words. Trocken meaning dry, Mayr meaning sea. Unfruchtbar, I think, signals something like barren. So yeah, pretty cool. This is clearly like an alternate earth scenario, so I was trying to place where these islands would be. I figure here is the most likely location, given that you name the Norwegian Sea and the North Sea. I wonder if I'm correct about that. One minor criticism I have will be include a scale bar. It would be really interesting to see how large these islands are. Other than that, I thoroughly enjoy this. Great map making. Next up we have Arav Paul who submits some grammar changes from their language, Kahayo. Originally, Kahayo was a purely ergative absolutive system. This is because I tried to make the system earth like and not earth like at the same time. The word chi, meaning from, gets suffixed to the absolutive to become the ablative. Chi then got suffixed to the genitive to mean something along the lines of moving away from possession. So, apple my from would mean the apple is moving from my possession. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that this means I am giving an apple. This then got suffixed onto the object, so the word would now be apple me genitive ablative as one word. Because of this, the word chi becomes reanalyzed as a word meaning to give. The fictional speakers of Kahayo now notice that the way you make a sentence involving the word to give is by putting the subject in the genitive, suffixing the verb onto the object and suffixing the subject to the object. This becomes so common that it becomes a default for all verbs, aside from a few exceptions that are common enough to resist this change. And so, in almost all environments, you use the genitive to show the subject. So this is a really weird system which you're going for and that's cool, I applaud your thinking outside of the box here. I like it. If I'm honest, I don't quite think this works in the current form you have it. There's mainly two reasons for this. First reason is your example sentence of apple my from, that being interpreted as I am giving an apple is kind of weird because apple my from isn't a verbal phrase. Like if anything, I would hear that and think the apple that used to be mine, like an adjectival phrase. So I think it's a little bit strange that your speakers interpret it that way. Perhaps look at reworking that slightly. The other issue I have is that I think statements of giving are not used frequently enough in order for speakers to then take their construction and make it default across the board. So I think you may need to come up with another justification there as to why it becomes so common. And also, slight point that I, I think you're aware of, but just to put out there, if the genitive is used to show the subject, it's not really the genitive anymore, it's just a marked nominative. It's cool that it came from the genitive, but it still would be, the speakers would still think of it as just being a marked nominative. But again, I applaud you for thinking way outside the box here. That's really cool. I hope you can make it work. Next up, we have Kate Harrison who submits the universe. The universe we live in is finite. It doesn't have an edge, but its volume is only 100 million cubic miles. This is the topology map of the surface. When you go on one side long enough, you will either just go back to where you started or get flipped. So your heart would be on the right instead of the left, which is very illegal because it means your chirality is flipped, which means things you eat will not chemically mix well. For example, some chemicals like mint will taste different, like licorice. I think that's an upgrade just me personally, but other stuff that is normally harmless can be deadly. Some medicine that helps with smelling issues can cause brain damage. So it's illegal because we want things to be safe to eat and heal. So far, science hasn't explained two things, 
the force that pulls us down, and the gates of enough. The force isn't that interesting, it just happens to be something all quantum particles besides light obey. The gates are much more interesting. The 12 gates are shaped like a star. The 5-2 star is known as the pentagram. The 7-2 and the 7-3 are the ones I like the best. But the gates are the 6-2 star, also known as the symbol of enough. I tried to find out more info about enough, but all I found was that it either means that this world is enough for us, or this is our last chance, this is enough. I found the info from the 10 oldest religions in the world. So this is also weird and also really interesting. The most interesting thing about this guys is that this submission comes from a 13 year old. Now, I don't know about you, but I was 13, I was like, what, like picking my nose? This 13 year old is out there creating universes and like climb bottle universes with mysterious magical gates. Like amazing, Kate. Well played. One of the things I like the most about this is the presentation. Like it's presented like a an essay from a student to a teacher. And it brings in ideas of the unreliable narrator. Like is this student a good student? Maybe the universe isn't like this at all. They've just like failed miserably in doing their research. What you've got here is a really fun idea and just the presentation is also really fun. Well played Kate. Next up we have SCS Omega with their Aryan phonology and romanization. Could you review my conlang? It's called Aryan. It's my first, so be lenient on mistakes, but harsh on criticism. So I have three things to say about the phonology. One, th is a really rare sound. We have it in English, but cross-linguistically, it's extremely rare and also quite difficult to pronounce. So consider ditching it. Also consider adding in a in your vowel inventory. It feels weird that it's missing. You also have ejectives. Now I would ditch those as well, particularly given that it's your first conlang. Stay away from all the exotic stuff. What I always advise people to do is to take your native language and just tweak it a little bit. So like assuming English is your native language, take the English inventory, maybe strip a few sounds, maybe add in a couple of sounds and then work with that. And once you've kind of outgrown that, then you can look at, you know, clicks and adjectives and implosives if you if you want to. But too often I think people just go, oh, I'm creating conlang, I need to throw all the exotic at it. You can get plenty of cool results even if you stick with like a quote unquote boring inventory. The main thing I want to talk about though is the romanization. I think your romanization really needs to be reworked here. So for me, a romanization has to do two things. It has to make it so that you can easily write your conlang and it has to make it so that I can somewhat easily read your conlang. You've gone for a number of choices here that make it quite difficult for me to, to read your conlang. Namely the three and the at symbol, I just get rid of those altogether. I've never seen a language using those symbols, so I have no kind of context for them. So I found myself when I was reading some of your words, continuously going back and checking, wait a minute, what does tree actually mean? What does at sign actually mean? So straight off the bat, get rid of those and things will be improved greatly. Also, aspiration is usually romanized as a H after a consonant. You have the reverse, that's kind of weird and counter to the expectation I would have going into reading a conlang. And it's definitely a bit strange and jarring that you use consonant plus H to signal adjective. That can lead to some serious confusion, I think. So I would just signal adjectives if you are to use them with like an apostrophe. My advice here would be spend a little bit of time researching how different romanizations work. Start with like say Mandarin or Korean, they're good starting points and see how they do things. And then after a while you get kind of a feel for like the established norms of romanization and that will go a long way to helping you out here in my opinion anyways. Next up we have Phonican66, who submits their cuneiform inspired writing system for their language, Devusi. This is my cuneiform inspired writing system. The language is called Devusi, after a fictional historical figure of mine. Here are letters and symbols of the system, their approximate sounds in English, an example sentence, and a romanized variant of that sentence. And here is a photograph of a clay tablet I made with a short passage in Devhusi to demonstrate the writing system. Well played. I studied your symbols and tried to read something from your clay tablet and for the most part it worked out fairly well so I think the system is logical and coherent. The impression I get is that like you, you physically got a clay tablet and like you physically wrote on said clay tablet in your cuneiform inspired writing system. If that's the case, Props. I think I mentioned this on a previous The Worst, but seriously, there is nothing more fun and rewarding than actually writing in your writing system on its intended medium. So be that stylus with clay or ink on leaves, etc. Next step is to take what you got and evolve it. What happens if your society moves away from clay tablets? How would that affect the writing system? 
that's a super fun thing to do. Anyways, that was that. Another Willerst done. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted. Without you, there literally isn't a show. Much, much appreciated. If you want to be in the chance of appearing in future Willerst videos, everything you need to know is in the description. So yeah, thank you for submitting, thank you for watching, and thanks to all the patrons who helped make Artifexian a possibility. In particular, Lycan, Johan Spadka, Oliver Reed, Spencer Brownie, Alexander Roper, Andrew Pisha Hale, John Huyer, Rip the Passe, and World Anvil. Until next time, a grouse.